Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a first look at the solar components as well as the initial layout before we hang the items. Stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Just want to go over some of the major components I'll be putting into the off-grid solar shed. And it's actually going to be a grid assist system because we're going to bring power over just because of the inverter charger we're using allows for a generator or an electrical line to be used. With that said, the shed's probably going to run 95% of the time off solar and batteries, but it will be nice to have some grid power in the shed just in case you want to separate the system, take it offline, and if it's the dead of winter and I need to service the batteries or do something, I can still have power in the shed. Now my advice to anyone who's going to install solar is to really think about the components and system you're going to use. I've gone ahead and designed a sketch. It's very basic, but uh, I put this together and really thought about the signal flow, how I want power to flow from component to component, and then I've gone ahead and laid things out. So when you're installing solar, you definitely want to lay your components out just for the practical purposes of where you want to hang things and how you want things to look. In my case, I laid out things on a couple pieces of plywood and then I was able to visualize as well as kind of match things up to my schematic of what I was using. I actually figured out I didn't need a couple extra breaker boxes and I'm glad I did this because I was able to pare down some of the components and really go with a streamlined setup. I was originally going to go through every component in the setup here but I think I'm going to wait until everything is set up then I can go over each component individually as well as talk about some things that you may want to consider when you're designing your system. With that said there is one component that is really important to the system and that's the inverter charger. So let's talk about this MPP Solar Hybrid LV2424 inverter charger. Uh, you may say well, why are you using an inverter charger? Uh, in this hybrid model on an off-grid system. So in all reality, this system is gonna be a grid assist. Whether you're using a generator or AC line source, uh, we're gonna have some backup power for the system. Also wanna mention that by using MPP solar, it's not a UL listed device. So you can never use this to truly grid tie legally, at least here in the United States. On my system, we have a grid tie roof system and the DIY solar system out in the field. That's all legally done. I have a permit for that. I'm using all UL listed components and everything is good to go. So if I use an MPP solar component like this, not UL listed, I'd be breaking the permit that allows me to backfeed as well as exceeding the capacity that I'm rated for. Our existing grid tied solar uses a couple different smart meters. Smart meters are definitely becoming the norm by power companies to monitor energy use as well as provide data back to the end user. In our setup, we have two meters. We have our regular smart meter for home energy use as well as a production meter. In looking at a smart meter at the very basic level, one has to understand that there are a couple different data streams that are produced. The power company can tell how energy is flowing and on what stream the energy is on. Our grid tied solar flows on a certain energy stream because it's a line side tap. Now if we were to install the MPP solar and back feed energy through our grid tied system, the power company would see that energy on the load side. There's no fooling the power company here, nor do we want to put ourselves in the position of jeopardizing our grid tied permit. With that said, there are some benefits of using an MPP solar inverter charger in a situation like ours, where we're using this in a shed and off-grid situation, and it's not going to be grid tied to our regular system. So I've gone ahead and hung the components on the wall, used three quarter inch plywood, and I put some R13 batting behind the plywood. Just went ahead and did that now because I figure I wouldn't be getting behind there once we hung everything. And in case we end up insulating the entire shed, I'll have that part done. I won't have to take everything down to do it. So the next thing I need to do is obviously wire things up. I also need to run power from the pool to the shed because this will be a grid assist system. And then go ahead and get the solar hooked up I want to get power in here first off the pool and be able to run lights and so forth and then I can work in here and go ahead and hook up the solar. I think I'll run this shed probably 95% off uh, solar and battery but it is going to be nice to have some grid assist power. 
Work began next on digging the ditch. This will allow me to bring the line from the pool or the house to the shed and then I'll run a new line back from the shed to power the pool. The wiring to and from the shed as well as all the AC and DC wiring will be explained in a future video. So next time you see me, hopefully we'll have a full ditch dug from the pool to the shed. We've got some work to do. Thanks for watching. Next video should be all the wiring for our components. We're inside the shed, AC power, uh, grid assist, and everything else we need. Everything except for the solar panels. We're gonna start rolling out the batteries, show you those, how we're gonna hook those up. Got a surprise on the BMS and uh, should be pretty good. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to uh, join the channel and follow along with the journey. All right, take care and have a fantastic day.